I'm going to teach you my best tips for how to stop dying in Warzone. What's up guys, it's Average Ol, making average content for the average viewer. And if you guys are tired of dying more than Sean Bean does in every single bit of cinema that he's ever been a part of, then these Warzone tips and tricks on how to die less in Warzone are going to suit you down to the ground. Before we get on with it, let's see if we can hit 30 likes on this video, and if you're new here, it would be awesome if you'd subscribe. So let's talk about it. So if you look on YouTube, there are hundreds of videos which give you tips on how to get more kills, how to get more wins in Warzone, but one thing that these all have in common is that they all expect you to have a similar level of aggression as a middle-aged woman with a graduated bob after her food comes out a little less than piping hot. Probably called Debs or Karen. Scary, I know. So. I thought that the average player who has a KD closer to that of the price of petrol rather than a KD that is closer to pi squared, it might be handy to have some tips for how to die less in Warzone. And yes, I did just reference pi in my video as if having a ginger beard and glasses whilst making gaming videos on the internet didn't make me a massive nerd enough. Deal with it. So number one, don't be an idiot. Okay, so picture the scene. You're playing with your mates and you've just entered the second circle and all of the madness of the beginning of the game is over. You've all got pretty good loot and you're in good stead to have a good game. But then you see a few little red dots ping on the radar. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes it is really right to push. It can even be very lucrative at times and will undoubtedly help you get better at the game. That being said, there is a difference between you and your mates approaching the situation cautiously and taking your time, and you running in with an RPG and a dream, downing one and then getting lit up by his teammates and shouting something like, oh, that's not fair, how did he not miss a shot? Look buddy, you might think that you're shroud and that you can take on a 1v3 and leave your teammates behind to inevitably have to spend their hard earned cash to buy you back after you try the same haphazard target in the bloody gulag and end up getting your head splattered like a whitehead. Look, the point of this tip isn't to tell you guys just to stay still and quiver in a corner of a shed for the whole game, but instead you just have to have some thought and a bit more communication and syncretism so you and your team are always on the same page and they don't have to miss out on buying a loadout drop because of your sorrow. Us. Number two, don't go in blind. In Warzone, we have a plethora of options that we can use to gain information on the whereabouts of your enemies, and I cannot stress enough how important it is that you all use these to your advantage. Now, the first thing that I'd recommend you use is the heartbeat sensor. These little beauties are one of those things that when I first saw them in multiplayer, I thought, why the hell would I waste my tactical slot on this piece of trash? However, in Warzone, these can prove invaluable items, but there is a right way that you can use them. For me, I am constantly treating this thing like it's my phone. And no, I don't mean using it for Pornhub and looking at really random questions to ask at the end of my videos, but I mean that I'm constantly checking it. About to loot a building? Check the heartbeat. About to leave the same building? Check the heartbeat. Even if you are about to walk around a corner of a building, I'm checking that little sucker. The thing is, you have no reason in Warzone to just be running around willy-nilly. You have this tool at your disposal, so fucking use it. I cannot count how many times I have saved myself from an early trip to the Gulag because I saw that little dot appear on my heartbeat sensor. In addition to this, you should also have at least one squad member using a thermal with a high powered scope. Although a lot of people might be using cold blooded, it is still a very useful tool for scoping out an area and making sure that a position is clear before moving in. Using these two things in tandem as much as possible before a fight is going to help you no end. Number three, think about your damn loadouts. I know I've banged on about loadouts in the past, but there are a few things that I feel need to be addressed so that you and your squad can use these loadouts to their full potential. First of all, make sure that every single person that you are playing with is using cold blooded. Now you might have that one squad mate that tells you that cold blooded is stupid and that they are going to use double time or quick fix. Now. These people are also the ones that said they don't like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad, and that the only music you should listen to is some really obscure indie rock band that literally no one has heard of. Now first of all, why the hell are you even playing with them? And second of all, what you need to do is get a hold of them and continuously shake the shit out of them until they understand. Although. Maybe not at the moment, considering that we have to maintain a safe distance, but you can definitely have a stern word with them. But seriously, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link, and if you have one guy on your team sticking out like a seven foot tall ginger dude in the middle of North Korea, then he will give your whole team's position away. Now, whilst we're on the subject of loadouts, there are a few more things that will help your odds of survival in Warzone. 
Now I know I just said that the heartbeat sensor is very useful and yes it is an extremely powerful tactical to have but you don't need three of them per squad. One should do the trick provided that the person using it has more than three brain cells. What I would suggest is that you use at least one of your teammates slots to carry a smoke grenade. This means that if you do end up being pinned down in a building he can throw said smoke to cover your escape or if there is a loadout drop or a recon contract precariously in the middle of a field then they can cover you whilst you get it. And finally, I want to talk about ammo. In Warzone, there are a number of ways in which you can find yourself short on ammo, the most common of which is returning from the Gulag. Now I can't stress this enough, but it is so annoying when your teammate comes back from the Gulag and lands on a loadout drop and constantly moans about how they only have 7 bullets for their sniper, and how you should drop all of your hard earned bullets for them even though it was their fault that they went full on kamikaze into a building with a full squad upstairs. Thankfully, you can avoid this. What I have done is set up a second loadout that is exactly the same as my other one except for I have swapped two of the attachments for the weapon perk fully loaded. This means that when I pick up a loadout drop from the Gulag I will have full ammo for both my guns. So that's it on loadouts, just have a bit of thought about it. Number 4 always take the high ground. This tip might seem like a bit of a generic battle royale tip and you might think that it's not a very original tip from me and for those people I say I mean you're probably right but that doesn't take away from the importance of it. Being able to keep the high ground in this game is such a damn important thing to do. You will always have the advantage if you were looking down on people. With that being said it is even more important in Warzone as you might find that a lot of the time the circle closes in on you and you are faced with a sheer cliff face that you can't climb so you're left repeatedly slamming the jump button whilst you cough your guts up and end up coming 12th and feeling like you just want to throw your monitor out the fucking window. But this can all be avoided if you make sure that you are always heading for the highest bit of terrain available with plenty of time. Number 5 you need to fuck vehicles up. Many of you might have noticed that the current meta for Warzone amongst some of the more annoying players is to just hop in a vehicle and drive around running as many people over as possible just to be a bellend. So, so I would say that you guys need to make it a priority to have someone on your squad with a means of destroying vehicles. As it stands, the vehicles are very overpowered in Warzone. Not so much the rover, the quad or the helicopter as all of these can be fairly easily countered with some well placed shots but the jeep and the truck are pretty much tanks at this point as getting that shot through the window is near on impossible. Especially when you couple this with the fact that these vehicles can reverse at pretty much the same speed as they can drive normally and now you have to snipe them through the back window which is even bloody smaller. So I would suggest that the best thing to do is to have all of your squad mates carry at least C4. This will give you a fighting chance. However, there is one better that you can do. If you have a mate who isn't exactly a crack shot with a sniper rifle, you might be able to convince them that the best way for them to be an asset to the team is to rock one of the launchers. This is a surefire way to put those pesky vehicle hogs to rest. It's especially powerful as there is an abundance of rocket ammo kicking about in Verdansk and by the later circles everyone in the squad should be carrying full rocket ammo so your mate with the rocket launcher is going to have an unlimited amount of ammo to rain down hell on the enemy. This works even better with the Joker as you can take out all manner of roof campers and vehicle dwellers alike. So there we have it, my 5 top tips for how to die less in Warzone. I hope you have found some of them useful. As some of you know, I like to see who sticks around until the end of these little videos. So if you're still here, I'd like you to let me know by answering this question down below. What would you do if you could turn invisible for the next 24 hours? Personally, I would sneak in an extra daily job. That's it for me today, I'm Avery Joel, peace.